Uganda is a true wildlife reserve. There are wild gorillas and real-life witches here. But today, I'll show you something else. Today, we're talking about Ugandan alcoholism. Not only are Ugandans into witchcraft and superstitions, they also drink a lot of alcohol. According to the WHO, one in five Ugandans consume alcohol on a regular basis. According to the Ministry of Health of Uganda, it's one in four. Nearly 10% of the population have an alcohol use disorder. The interesting part here is what kind of alcohol Ugandans drink. Only 11% of the population drinks beer, 3% prefer hard liquor, and 1% drink wine. The rest consume other. But what exactly is other? This is a traditional booze, which they produce from what they have. Sugarcane, cassava, and bananas are all easily accessible everywhere here. The name of this booze is Waragi. In fact, Waragi is the name of a locally produced gin, but the name went viral and now every hard liquor is called Waragi here. This place started in the 1980s. Here it was on the forest and people used to, to, used to have only one drum and they could eat it behind their houses. But as the demand went on, it forced people to come up with ideas like this. Mm -hmm. Here, locally, they call them factories. All oh, this is a private factories? These are all private factories. How many factories here on the site? Here only, there are more than uh, 20 factories mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. only. But there are even when you were coming, you saw on your right, there are mm -hmm. more factories up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. In the Soviet Union, moonshine was produced in garages and kitchens, but here in Uganda, it's produced on a much larger scale. These illegal factories remind me of cocaine production run by Pablo Escobar. These tents in the middle of the woods, fires, people wearing dirty clothes, going around with buckets, packing something. Today, Waragi is the main alcoholic drink in Uganda. More than 80% of the population that drinks alcohol prefers Waragi. Although Waragi production requires some efforts, it's quite easy to store and to ship. It can be sold at a higher price than beer. You also get drunk much faster. To make Waragi, you have to put mash in a barrel. Close the barrel and leave it to boil. There's a copper tube connecting the barrel with another container. The tube is dipped into cold water. Distilled liquid goes into a bottle. The alcohol level can reach 60%. Waragi is usually drunk on its own in bars. There are sugarcane plantations in the central region of Uganda. They use treacle for Waragi production there. If you shake like this, the more the bubbles, the more mm -hmm. the quality, the good quality. Yeah, locally people drink it like this, dry, but uh, if you want to enjoy it more, you mix it with tonic. Why do people buy this homemade alcohol instead of uh, fabric alcohol? This is more cheaper. 500 mils of this local one can cost uh, between 5,000 and 10,000 Uganda shillings. Mm -hmm. And then the one from the fabric or from the factory, it can go for 35 to 45 Uganda shillings. And the quality is the same? The quality is not the same. This is better? <laughs> There's more percentage with this one, more alcoholic percentage. To those who have tested it before, they assume it's a, above 60% alcohol. This is 60%? Above, mm -hmm. more than 60%. More than, okay. What yeah. about uh, children? From uh, what age they start, first time they taste alcohol? And the government recommends when you're above 18, mm -hmm. but like in such areas where children are exposed to alcohol, they can even drink when they are 10 or 12, so they can start a drink. Uh, there's lots of children, they work in the factory, yeah? No, these ones are children of uh, like uh, the mama here working here. Mm -hmm. And because of the COVID, uh, schools were closed down, so they stay with their parents at workplaces like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you say that uh, 60 percent in Uganda drink alcohol. What? Uh, what? Uh, why so much? <laughs> <laughs> it seems he got the question. Can you answer? Why, why do you drink alcohol? Some people drink alcohol to pass their time. Sixty percent. They are too too much because others they they don't have jobs. So 
they can take their their time in the drinking. Так, how strong is it? It is a strong. Так, ну что? So, uh, выдохни сначала. You breathe out. Давай, Илья, прощай. All right, Ilya, it was nice knowing you. Go on. And swallow it. Wait, wait, wait. Это похоже на такую ядренейшую. Oh, it tastes like the strongest. Oh, like pure alcohol with pepper. Она горькая. It's bitter and it's disgusting. This is a marketplace of our village. Let's see what's on sale. First of all, there are some cabbages. Looking great. There are also some potatoes here. The finest ones. Those are green bananas. Ooh, boiled corn on the cob. This place is so vivid and lively because it's a stop. You can take a motorbike here and, and go somewhere else. How are you? How are you? Fine. Good? Yeah, hey, good. Something's on sale here. Oh, okay. Looks like a small shop. You can even buy alcohol here. There's a shop over there where you can buy some beer and casually drink it outside. Yeah, why not? Uh, we'll also get some beer here. How cold it is. So, how do you get along with the locals? A bottle of beer and everyone becomes a friend of yours. Now we are friends. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. You can see, guys, that people here are friendly and positive. If you're nice to them, they're nice to you as well. Oh my god, a bus! That's how people move around Ugandan villages. It's just a van full of people and some stuff. The van has arrived in our village. They're saying, if you want to talk, buy us some beer. They pour it all from that barrel. You really want to drink this? Yeah. The problem is that the guy wearing the red shirt is our driver. How strong is it? Quite strong. Quite strong. But yeah. you, you're a driver, remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Baraji is about 60 uh, degrees. And uh, this one? This one is about five or six. Like a beer. Yeah. So that was the bar. The bar looks amazing, I should say. That area is still a part of the village. Can I take a picture of you? Thank you. Ah, being true travelers, we've decided to embark on a hike. A wonderful mountain hike. The height of this mountain is 2100 meters. We're heading to another village now. We want to meet the locals, make some friends, you know, for tonight. Ah, here come our potential friends. These stunning men probably live in that village. Very handsome guys. All good, guys, all good. <laughs> nice suit. This is an incredible mountain pig living at a height of 2100 meters. Amazing. First thing you'll see here is a restaurant. They have happy hours there. You can have a Rolex here, pizza, or breakfast and tea. That one looks like a local bar. Local bars always look like half ruined because they're made for simple men who don't need comfort. They need beer. As you can see, there are no roads here. There are problems with the roads. Some men are sitting up there, you see? I'm impressed. There's no electricity here. This window is the only source of light. Vadim, look how cool. Here, they got scales. What else do they have here? Fizzy drinks, some Chinese stuff in those boxes, just like in Russia. People can buy stuff on credit given that they're good friends with the cashier. That's why the cashier is the most popular person in the village. Так, this is a bar. It's hotel? It's hotel. Really? Here are some stools, some benches. Everything is very simple. It's old-fashioned. 
it feels like this is a museum showing the lifestyle of uh, the 18th century. It's a bar. Yeah. Oh, that's what we are looking for. Exactly. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Can you buy drinks for, for, for these guys? And their music player is powered by a battery, which they charge somewhere else because there's no electricity here. There are some vendors here. While men are chilling in the bar, women are selling sweet potatoes here. So that's the village. Pretty cool, actually. A businessman came to buy some tea leaves. So there they are, packing it into bags for him. Tea costs 600 shillings per kilo. They're not going to get the money right away. This guy's taking notes, so they'll receive the earned money at the end of the month. There's a huge crowd of women down there. They're coming back from the plantation. Now look at the men! They're empty-handed! <laughs> women are carrying all the stuff. Women are, women are working while men are drinking waragi. <laughs> An amazing view of the sunset from the top of the mountain. There's also the most incredible football field I've ever seen. These local teams are playing right at the top of the mountain. Since they're playing on the top, they have to chase the ball every time it starts rolling down. I'm not a football fan, but it's really fascinating to watch them play. There are breathtaking views wherever you look. No wonder the view is so beautiful. This mountain is called the top of the world here. And there's a football field on top of the world. But we all know that, in fact, there would be a running track on top of the world. As we are heading here, when we are running to a brighter future. There's a secret facility over there. It's a military camp. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of dugouts or, or like some eco houses, kind of like those in Norway. They also have grass on the roof. That's about all they have in common. So local military, they have a camp here and that's how they've disguised themselves. It's absolutely forbidden to film here. So I'm just going to take a few shots from a distance just for you to see. I'm going to have to hide the camera now because that's a secret facility. They're making it secret by putting some grass on top of the buildings. <laughs> I am back to the village. There's some action going on here. Of course, there's no street lights here. Nevertheless, people gather around bars and shops. I can also hear some music. Let's see what's going on here. Under the influence of Ugandan vibe, I've decided to celebrate my birthday Ugandan style as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>